హలో వెల్కమ్ టు మాడ్యూల్ ఫిఫ్టీ టూ ఆఫ్ ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అండ్ ఇంట్రొడక్టివ్ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్స్ ఎట్ పాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ సో వీ షెల్ కంటిన్యూ అవర్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ ఫంక్షన్ స్పేసెస్ టుడే ద టాపిక్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్పనెన్షియల్ కరెస్పాండెన్స్ సో లెట్ మీ స్టార్ట్ విత్ థియరామ్ బికాస్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఆల్రెడీ ఇంట్రొడ్యూస్ ఆల్ ద రెలవెంట్ నొటేషన్ ఐ హోప్ యూ హ్యావ్ డన్ యువర్ హోమ్వర్క్ ఫార్ గెటింగ్ ఫెమిలియర్ విత్ దిస్ నొటేషన్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ ఎ లోకలీ కాంపాక్ట్ హాస్టార్ స్పేస్ వై అండ్ జడ్ ఆర్ ఎనీ టూ టెపలాజికల్ స్పేసెస్ ద ఇవాల్యుయేషన్ మ్యాప్ ఈ from x cross cxy to y given by e of x f equal to fx is continuous this is the first statement a function g from any topological space that is some arbitrary topological space z to cxy is continuous if and only if the composite e composite identity of x cross g from x cross z to y is continuous so this gives you criterion for determining functions into cxy when they are continuous if z is also locally compact and hausdorff okay locally compact hausdorff means is always a standing assumption on x now if z is also locally compact and hausdorff then the function c of z to c of x y to c of x cross z y the 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 exponential correspondence the the function that we defined last time the exponential correspondence map psi i am repeating it namely psi of g is defined as e composite identity of x cross g this is a homeomorphism notice that by this by this uh, statement b given any g here psi g which is defined by this one is continuous okay if and only if you don't need right so the psi though it takes values actually in y power x cross z it is actually inside this smaller subspace so that's why i can write like this the statement c is much more stronger it just says that this is actually homeomorphism so let us go through the proofs of these things carefully one by one one point which you can remember is the following and you know, how to remember whenever you take continuous functions from the domain must be locally compact hausdorff or locally compact regular something lo- some locally compactness has to be there so in the right in the beginning we took functions from x to y right therefore x was locally compact hausdorff there was no need to assume anything on the domain on the codomain similarly here there is no assumption on z the function is taking values inside cxy was C, before taking cxy i would like to ensure that x is locally compact hausdorff okay so that is the case when you come here because now you have to take cxy and then z to cxy so i am assuming z is also locally compact hausdorff now x and z are locally compact the product will be locally compact hausdorff so there is no extra assumption on this so still y is a free topological space no condition on y okay so this is it easy to remember where to put the hypothesis okay so first a i want to prove that exponential map e is the evaluation map e itself is continuous given an open set u in y we must show that e inverse u is open in x cross c x y so take a point here x not f not belonging to e inverse u what is the meaning of it belongs to e inverse u 
this implies that f naught from x to i contains the function and f naught of x naught is inside u right e of x naught f naught belongs to u the f naught x naught is inside u now use local compactness of x you can find a neighborhood compact neighborhood of k just just means that an open subset that is closure is k and that k is compact such that this f naught of k is contained inside u okay continuity will give you some neighborhood but inside that neighborhood we can take a compact neighborhood because locally compact so both of them are combined here this means that once you have this condition this condition means that f naught is in this bracket k u since bracket k u is an open subset of cxy we get a neighborhood k cross k u this is the product topology by the way uh, k cross k is a neighborhood of x naught k u is a neighborhood of f naught so this product is a neighborhood of x naught f naught now clearly if you take e of this e of this by the very definition of k u right take any x comma some f here f of x will be inside you so e of that is inside you that is the mean okay so we have found out a neighborhood of the point which is completely taken inside you by e that is the meaning of that e is continuous now let us prove b so now we start with an arbitrary space z and a continuous function identity cross g is continuous e is continuous because we have proved it in a so composite is continuous okay so one way is obvious now what we want to do is assume that this composite is continuous then you have to prove that this g is continuous see composite of two functions can be continuous without either of them being continuous you must know such examples if both f and g are continuous then the composite is continuous that is the standard uh, result that we have proved but it is possible to have neither of them are continuous but the composite is continuous okay so here we have to prove this non trivial result assuming the composite is continuous you have to prove that g is continuous okay for this it is enough to show that g inverse of these basic open sets are the basic open sets are open so this is a standard method we have been following instead of proving that every inverse image of every open set is op open we can just take basic or sub basic open sets which are sub basic open sets here show that g inverse of that is continuous so that will show that g is continuous so what are sub basic open sets here k compact u open then you take bracket k u okay so start with a point z not belonging to z such that g of z not is in k u so g of z not is a function remember that now okay because g is a function from z to continuous function from x to y then for every point k in k we have comp look at this composition e composite identity of cross g operating upon k comma z not is nothing but by definition g z not the first coordinate remains k and then evaluation evaluation of g z not on k which is this one okay so g z not belongs to k u k is inside k so that is inside u here so by continuity of e composite identity of x cross g this is continuous is the hypothesis there exist neighborhoods wk cross vk inside x cross z of this pair a k comma z not such that identity composite i uh, e e composite identity of x cross g operating on this product neighborhood 
it goes inside you that is what we want that is inside you since k is compact we can pass on to a finite cover k contained inside i into 1 to n w k i i will call it as w what we have done for each k we have got such a thing right there is a neighbor w k so this w k is cover the whole k and k is compact therefore i have got a finite cover here which i am denoting by w k 1 w k 2 w k on the other hand i take v to be intersection of this v k 1 v k 2 v k n then all that i need is w cross v for this union and here intersection that will be contained inside w k i cross v k i taken union i ring 1 to 1 to n any point here will be in one of them k the same indexing on the other side so second coordinate is in all of them so it is inside that one so this is contained in this union okay therefore if you apply e composite identity of x cross g on this one that will be inside you now okay because g identity of each of these is contained inside you okay so the union will be also contained inside you, which implies that g of v okay belongs to w comma u this this uh, uh, bracket here okay that is the meaning of this one but w bracket u is contained inside k bracket u because k is contained inside u w is larger okay anything which brings the whole entire of w inside u must be always bringing k inside u since v is a neighborhood of z not we are done okay we have found out a neighborhood v of z not so the g of v is inside this basic sub basic open set that is what we have started with okay so we have to go through these steps to prove the converse part here namely just assuming that this composite is identity so sorry this composite is uh, uh, continuous we proved that g is continuous so that is part b now we will do the last part c namely exponential psi is a homeomorphism as pointed out before first of all because of b psi is well defined i repeat this is what i told you right in the statement here because of b this makes sense that this is a function from here to here otherwise i have i have no uh, i am not have liberty at defining psi psi has to be defined like this because if g is continuous this right hand side is continuous we are here so that is the first uh, remark again this is repeated here that's all okay so psi is well defined let now i will have two more exponential maps here so sorry evaluation maps here remember this capital e was from x cross c x y to y similarly i have this z cross c z c x y to c x y and e2 is from x cross z cross c of x cross z y to y so domains are repeated here okay this is domain that is the that is the codomain the last thing will be the codomain that is the uh, pattern for evaluation maps everywhere so there are two such evaluation maps okay because we are assuming that z is also compact locally compact and hosed off okay the statement a is valid for both of them that means that these evaluation maps are continuous okay both of them are continuous now again from b so that is from a b 
with c of z c x y in place of z so b gives you criterion for continuity into a function space so now you apply to instead of z you take this one okay in place of z and x cross z in place of x you look at continuity of psi okay what is the domain of psi it is c of z comma c of x y what is the co domain it is c of x cross z comma y right so that is why i am taking this in x cross z in place of x continuity of psi is the same thing as continuity of this e2 composite identity cross psi identity where identity of x cross z now if i prove this composite is continuous psi will be continuous so i find is directly proving psi is also possible okay that will also have cumbersome notation so i find this way it is easier to state it once you have done uh, the ground work here namely b you can keep using b again and again so i will show e2 composite this identity of x cross z psi psi this is continuous the domain is x cross z cross c of z comma x cross z to y okay see from x cross z identity map x cross z psi is from c of z to c of uh, sorry uh, psi is a map from where to where psi is a map from c of c of c of uh, z to c x y to c of x cross z to y so that is how i have taken this okay this is this is one c of z cross x cross z to y so given by here is x here it is z here is lambda okay so that will give you lambda z of x so this latter map is the composite of the two maps identity cross e1 from x cross z cross c of z comma c x y to c of x cross y first see this x remains as it is this this is one evaluation here z, z part disappears okay x uh, x part has remained so c x y you have come then you apply again evaluation map here this ordinary evaluation map namely e x cross c x y to y that is what we have started with okay so that is the same thing as this evaluation map this composite of these two each of them is composite is what we have just seen this is e1 and that is e so these two are continuous therefore this is continuous so that establishes that psi is continuous exactly similarly you can show that its inverse namely phi is continuous in fact we want to show that phi is a homeomorphism same thing as psi is a homeomorphism note that as a set function we have seen that this psi is a bijection and its inverse is phi therefore we have no other choice but to show that once a function is uh, bijection it has a unique inverse no matter which smaller subset you take on each uh, smaller subset the uh, inverse will be corresponding uh, restrictions that's all so i have to take the same phi show that this is continuous now then it will prove automatically that both phi and psi are homeomorphism okay so let us prove that phi is also continuous so proof is even simpler here but anyway you have to go through these steps namely given any continuous function f from x cross z to y we know that for each z in z the partial function f z namely you are fixing one coordinate z and taking x going to f of x z so those things are continuous that you know already joint continuity implies partial continuity therefore we get a function this function f hat for each z you get f z so i am denoting by f hat so given by z going to f z this function itself is continuous why by b now we apply b okay 
so you have to to see z to c x y continuous you have to take x cross z to you know that evaluation map you compose it with identity cross this one and we see okay so if you apply that it will follow that f f hat is continuous because finally what you get is f of x z okay when you evaluate f of f f hat okay this means that first of all that under this field c of x cross z y goes inside c of z comma c x y because it goes to f hat and f hat is a continuous function from z to c x y okay so this is just the justification that phi has a correct domain and codomain now we have to show that phi is continuous that part is still there okay from b the continuity of e is the same thing as continuity of even composite iz cross phi okay so what is that function that is z comma f going to fz again by b this latter function is continuous because when you evaluate it x further x x comma z comma f it is just f of xz and this is continuous okay because f of xz is continuous this is a evaluation map from x cross z to whatever c of x cross z y okay so this is continuous so this continuity implies this is continuous this continuity implies phi is continuous all right so we have established the card you know the cardinality in a very strong sense homeomorphism now homeomorphism types of you can just write uh, instead of continuous function uh, y power x power z is the same thing as y power x cross z okay you can easy to remember this one but everything continuous and the whatever goes in the exponents those spaces must be locally compact so you remember this much okay here is a remark note that in b we do not need the local compactness of x to prove the continuity of g to g from z to cxy okay this is needed okay in the in the proof of a okay the local compactness of x is needed in the other way around implication only because it is needed in a if you want to apply other way around then you have to use a also the proof of a is the same if we assume x is locally compact and regular which is slightly more general than assuming locally compact hausdorff because we have seen that locally compact and hausdorff implies regularity but the other way may not be true so we can also do with locally compact regularity all that i have used here is that points of x have arbitrary small neighborhoods which are what compact neighborhoods the the set of compact neighborhoods of a point forming a fundamental system at each point so now we shall uh, do one more uh, one more justification for you know introducing this compact open topology all right let yd be a metric space we say a sequence fn from x to y is compactly convergent or uniformly convergent on each compact subsets of x so this is a longer <laughs> wording so people call compact convergent there is no other uh, no other justification that's all okay this is a neat uh, wording this is very long so compactly convergent to a function f what happens I mean, when this set happens, namely, if for every epsilon positive and a compact subset K, there exists a not such that 
distance between f and k and f k is less than epsilon for every k inside k and n bigger than n naught. If this happens for each k and then this n depends upon k that will be just point wise convergence. So, the same n works for all the points of a k that is uniformly on k. A k is compact that is why it is compactly convergent is the name. Okay. So, this is not my definition this is a standard definition I am just recalling it. Now, we come to something let y be a metric space x be locally compact or regular, locally compact Hausdorff or regular whatever, one uh, compact Hausdorff or regular one of them, a sequence f n from x to y of continuous function is compactly convergent to a continuous function f from x to y, if and only if as a sequence in C x y C o that with, with the compact open topology it converges to f. Here the hypothesis is sequence is continuous func sequence of continuous function and the limit is also continuous. Okay. Then compactly convergence implies the usual convergence in this topology. That is what final conclusion here. We are not proving starting with a sequence of functions, we are not proving that f is continuous. If indeed that is true, we know already in the, in the case of metric spaces. Okay. If it is compactly convergent sequence of continuous functions, then f is continuous. But we are not proving that statement for compact open topology. There we are assuming this one. The statement is that namely f n converges to f, f n is continuous, f is continuous. The convergence can be in the general sense of in metric space. Here you can term it in terms of compact open topology. That is the whole idea. Okay, the statement is clear I hope. Now, let us work it out. It takes a little bit of time, but this is routine. There is absolutely no new ideas here. All these things are standard methods in analysis. Suppose f n is compactly convergent to f. Let f belong to w, where w is an open subset in the compact open topology. We have to show that there is some n naught such that f n belongs to w for all n bigger than n naught. So, this will prove that f n converges to f in the compact open topology. Okay. So, one way implication will be done. So, let us do this one. Let k i u i i range to 1 to k be such that k i is are compact and u i is are open and f p is in the intersection of k i u i contained inside w. This is because these things make a sub base. So, whenever you have, you have an open subset and a point, you have a neighborhood coming from a you know base. This is intersection of finitely many elements of sub base. Okay. So, there is such a set k i u i, this is bracket k i u i intersection. Now, for any a, any subset of this matrix space y and r positive, we have the standard notation long back we have used this one b r of a is set of all y inside y such that the distance between y and a is less than r. It is like if is a is singleton then this is open ball otherwise this is in a you know r neighborhood of this r neighborhood of this a ok distance between y and r a is r is less than r. Now, if f is continuous function and k i s are compact, f of k i s are compact, f is here, so f of k i s are inside u i, right, where each u i is open. Therefore, you can find an epsilon i positive such that this open neighborhood of epsilon neighborhood of f k i itself is contained inside u i all that you have to do is 
take the distance from distance between f k i which is compact and complement of u which is close that is a positive number. So, take any epsilon i smaller than that this will do. So, if you have done it for all the i, i read 1 to k, you can take this epsilon to the minimum of them. Once you have an epsilon, you get an integer n i such that for all n bigger than n i, we have distance between f n x and f x is less than epsilon for every x inside k i. This is the compact convergence of f, the sequence f n to f. Okay. For each k i which is compact, I will get an n i here. But what is the meaning of this one? This means that you see f x x is inside k i. So, f x will be inside f of k i and epsilon is same epsilon. So, if you take the epsilon neighborhood of this f of k i, this f n of the entire k all the points must be inside here. Okay, f n of x must be inside here that is true for all k i. So, f n of k i must be here. Okay, this happens for all the i i equal to 1 2 3 up to k. Now, if you take n naught maxima. So, I have I have this this n is bigger than n i corresponding here, but now if I take n naught to be maximum of n 1 into n k and n is bigger than n naught then all of them will be simultaneously true right therefore f n of k i will be contained inside u i for all of them which just means that f n is intersection f n is in the intersection of this bracket k i u i but that is inside w ok. So, one way we have proved to start with f such a name all the f n's n greater than some n naught, they are also inside that is what we have proved. Okay. The converse, converse is more or similar, but slightly different now we will see. Suppose f n converges to f in C x y, given k contained inside x compact and epsilon positive by continuity of f and local compactness of f. I have to use this one somehow for each x belonging to k choose neighborhood v x of x a set v x bar is compact and f of v x bar is contained inside some neighborhood of f x I will choose epsilon by 3. So, that is epsilon by 3 is our just a afterthought you know this kind of thing I could have chosen some epsilon finally I will get 3 epsilon otherwise I that is why I have to start in the beginning epsilon by 3 that is all. Okay, so, again local compactness and continuity of f is used. So, far f n is the sequence has not entered here. Choose finitely many points x 1 x 2 x r belong to k such that k is contained is i range to 1 to r this v x i for each x inside k I have got v x and v x bar has this property, they cover the compact set k. So, I get a finite cover. Okay, this is again a routine thing. Now, f n converges to f in C x y implies that for each of these i, there x will be n i such that f n will be inside this open subsets, this brackets v x i comma b epsilon f of x i okay, v x i bar comma b epsilon 3 f x i bracket this is an open subset. So, f n should be inside n bigger than n i okay, because f is there. So, after certain stage f n must be there. So, this happens for n bigger than n i again take n naught to be maximum of n 1 n r then if n is bigger than n naught and x is inside k, I am going to verify this uniform convergence part. D f n of x and f, f, f of x is less than or equal to f n of x and go to f n of x i, keep n the same, change x to x i plus now f n of x i 
to f x i plus f x i to f x. So, there are three quantities here. If we choose i such that see x is somewhere ok, x is inside k. So, it is inside one of these v x i choose particular v x i say x belongs to v x i then each of these quantities on the right hand side will be less than epsilon by 3 because I have chosen i here ok if they happens to be j you have to put everywhere j that is all <laughs> so they are epsilon by 3 so hence we are through some total is in this distance is less than epsilon so, I made a remark saying that if you have a sequence which is convergent, you know, in C x, a sequence of uh, this one which is suppose uh, compactly convergent, ok. So, that will be a function, some function, would that be already continuous? See, I said I am not proving or I am not addressing this problem in this theorem, but that problem binds me, but, but we can you know it can uh, uh, bother me right. As a function it is some function from x to y. So, that is the same thing as saying that under the standard topology is this one a closed subset of y power x. Okay. This is the question. So, y power x also I am giving you compact open topology only, not the product topology. Would it be close? That is a question. Compact open topology on this one, compact open topology is this one, but is it a closed subset? This is a question. Okay. A completely satisfactory answer will take us to yet another concept which we have not introduced here. Now, that concept has the name uniformities. Okay. So, which we have not introduced so far, so we shall skip it. There is no time for doing uniformities. If you are interested, then you can look into many books. Special book for me is <laughs> my book is Kelly's book. Okay, thank you. So, next time we shall use this compact open topology to do some interesting application. Okay? Thank you.